Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena and today we're gonna be playing with some Viking bridge spam and as you probably could have guessed there are still players that are playing it so as long as there is the opportunity I'm gonna just mill this deck dry because frankly it's somehow alive and I don't know why I mean Viking should be dead already a couple of times ago but it still finds a way to be a relevant deck Obviously I could have played a Viking on this steel hammer, but I kind of thought like I'm gonna just play PC Archer, force him to make the decision. Uh, he's gonna actually play in a very annoying style. This PC Archer won't get a lineup and the ghost won't get a splash, so pretty much all my <coughs> about to say all my uh, tries were in vain, but at the same time I don't really mind that much. I'm gonna just play a Twins to kite this uh, Steel Hammer for a bit. Then it's gonna go once again for my tower and I'm gonna just play Ghost to distract it right here. So, now bot will be playing uh, a default deck. That's pretty obvious for anyone who kinda knows how this game works. If you don't switch your deck, you will be playing a giant skeleton, uh, bomb skeleton, steel hammer deck, which, um, yeah, um, is not the best, but uh, many people play it because they are too lazy to switch their decks. I'm gonna play Blitz here, and that's gonna be a perfect counter on this Bomberman. Obviously, I had to play a Bullets later on to counter the uh, Bomb Blasters as well, but it doesn't really matter for me. What matters for me is that I got a very uh, beautiful counter on this uh, on this uh, Bomberman because it's actually a pretty uh, difficult timing to hit if you try it by yourself. Well, right now I'm gonna just go for a Ghost on this push. I would say even mini push because it wasn't like a super huge push. I'm gonna go for a fifth here on the Bomberman just to mitigate the damage that my Viking will receive. And right now, I think I will genuinely just go for a bit of spam. My opponent will try to prevent me from doing so. And actually, these bullets were getting a ton of value since right now my push at the in the middle is pretty much non-existent. I'm gonna play Thief and the PC Archer to counter these bomb blasters, and I'm gonna just play uh, Twins in the very back. Just because I can, you would uh, kinda say it's a banter play and it's it absolutely it's. I'm gonna just play Viking in the middle because why not? I'm gonna just say GG's because the game has been over and my opponent couldn't uh, absolutely counter my plans. So uh, I deserve these four medals. He loses actually zero because he was at zero point. And let's jump to the game number two. And in the game number two, we're gonna be facing Mafio with zero medals, who starts with a Mother Devil, which pretty much only uh, is being played in a meta game with a brute. So let's see if my uh, my opponent is a fellow meta connoisseur, or does he prefer uh, his uh, off-meta style? I'm gonna play a, a Twins with the Pierce Archer because honestly, why not? And I'm gonna play Twin, I mean Thief, instantly on the opposite side. Okay, unfortunately the tower will target the Pearson Archer, that's the interaction that sometimes goes one way, sometimes the other, and I never can figure out which way will it be. This time though, he's gonna be, this time it's gonna be working uh, not in my favor. Also, my opponent will be playing a two steel hammers, which is definitely not a play when your deck is Viking. Here I'm gonna actually sacrifice the Necromancer, which is definitely not a play. Uh, to create two apes, I would uh, always uh, choose to have the Necromancer instead of two apes. Here I'm gonna just get a kill on this Mario Devil, obviously he tried to defend it, but the tower was already in vain and uh, I don't think my opponent could do anything to stop it from collapsing. So it's gonna be a very nice start into the game. Mafio certainly shouldn't be too proud of uh, his start. I'm gonna get the piercing archer here just to DPS this steel hammer and then I think I'm gonna just kite this bomb skeleton with the viking just to preserve as much health on this viking as physically possible 
and get the counter push on pretty much both sides. I'm gonna get a fifth here. I think this is gonna be <coughs> very good play. I'm gonna get the twins here in the middle. And this time I okay. This time you, you see. Recently, the piercing archer got uh, got targeted by the tower, and this time piercing archer was actually the secondary target, and. Uh, I never can figure out which is which, when, when is when, and that's why uh, this interaction, in my opinion, at least is very good. So I'm gonna get a conversion on this uh, level. Malpont will try to stop my Viking on the left side, but once he plays Bomb Skelter on the one side, the other side is always open, and that's where I will strike with the Ghost, with the Fifth, with everything I have. I don't think my opponent is prepared to defend this push as the Viking Tower falls and my opponent has to... Actually, he doesn't type uh, GG. Very unfortunate. I think I kind of deserve that for outplaying him. But you never can force the response out of your opponent. Sometimes they will just leave. And that's the part of the game. And we're gonna take it. Another four points in the pocket. Let's jump to the game number three. And we're gonna get one more uh, game, this time against Apollo with 2200 mils. He says, nice play, obviously let's respond uh, to him with the same. We're gonna actually wait uh, against him because so far Apollo was uh, playing a lot of splemetry, uh, so I kinda expect that this is gonna be the deck of his choice. And I actually don't like to play a first move against the splemetry. He's gonna play archers. I'm gonna just play bullets on the one side just to annoy him and kind of make him move. Let's see if he actually... Okay, he actually makes a move. I'm gonna play Pierce Archer for the Poison or a Flying Bomb. Alright, <laughs> he plays a Flying Bomb, so... Either he's playing some kind of a weird deck or he will be playing a... Uh, he's pla okay. I know what deck he's playing. Okay, he's gonna be playing a general, which I uh, have recorded a video on recently, which has a skeleton hut. In this case, I actually should be attacking him a lot. I'm gonna play twins on this side. Let's see if my uh, fifth. Okay, my fifth won't get any hit. I'm gonna actually go very aggressively against the skeleton hut. Let's see his reaction time. He's not gonna actually react on time. Uh, I'm scared of him playing general here, and I actually was scared for a reason. I'm gonna go for the Viking, and this general will get a lot of damage. But then, after that, we're gonna be having a, a big counter push, so everything kinda has its second end. I'm gonna go for a fifth here, just to get this very dynamic push, and fifth on the tower is always good for us. I'm gonna go for bullets. Just to finish out on the tower, and that's gonna be a very nice situation for us. Apollo actually tabs out, which is absolutely, absolutely surprising. I cannot blame him because he kind of runs with the general into a Viking, which is definitely not the thing you want to see. But like I've said, this general deck, which I've uh, shown in the very recent video of mine, is very solid, and if you know what you're doing. He kinda cannot get uh, countered in any single any matchup. This matchup is one of them. You kinda have to never play general unless your opponent plays Viking, then you're just throwing everything in the kitchen sink on the opposite side, and that's pretty much how you win the game. Usually, Viking Bridge Fun players aren't that patient uh, by not playing Viking, and you will trade better if you're not playing, uh, if your opponent doesn't play Viking. So it's pretty uh, decent like tip. And obviously if you counterplay with general you will always like uh, get some damage and if you then manage to defend the viking counter push you'll be always good to go. So that's how you navigate it from the general perspective. You already have seen how do I navigate it from the viking perspective. You just need one break and if they panic you can just uh, go uh, over and over until they're done. So yeah, that's gonna be the game right here. Let's jump to game number four. 
And the another game we're getting against Extron with zero medals. Let's just play it wins in the back because it's like one of the most flexible plays you can make again as a bridge spam player. Let's see what's gonna be the follow up. My opponent actually doesn't respond in any way, in fact, which is very surprising for me. I'm gonna just play Piercing Archer, just trying to double down on everything. I'm gonna get a blitz on this helicopter. Unfortunately, it doesn't accomplish too much. At least my Piercing Archer finishes this helicopter down, which is pretty nice. Probably my opponent got some kind of lag at the start as he didn't respond to anything I had. Very unfortunate to see, but we're not gonna stop by any means. I'm gonna just play Viking, that's another uh, tip that you can get uh, for this deck. Viking and Ghost is a very strong synergy and if you can play it, you definitely should. Uh, be because basically Viking takes care of any uh, uh, single target units and the Ghost uh, takes care of any multiple target units and basically I have already getting 3 star, holy cow. Uh, either way, the best way to deal with this composition is either by attacking it from the air or by kiting it because uh, you pretty much cannot distract it with small units because you have the Ghost and you cannot like tank it because even I mean, Viking is good against this composition, but you won't always have the Viking against this composition, especially that, well, I mean, in Viking Mirror, you actually can get a Viking against the Ghost, very important thing, and then, uh, like, uh, make your towers uh, help with the skirmish. Uh, in this case, you can actually get away with it, uh, but uh, in any other case, I would uh, recommend to be very careful against this combo, just uh, hit it from the air or uh, kite it, for instance, with Brute or Explore. Okay, so that was a little my rant, uh, because this game was uh, was uh, pretty finished from the very get-go. Let's jump to game number 5 and wrap this video up. And the last game of today's video will be against Angel with 37 mils. And he's gonna be our uh, final boss of today's video. He's gonna be playing Super Ape first play, which is ab absolutely acceptable play. I'm gonna actually get a Viking against uh, his skeletons, but fortunately, Ghost help was absolutely enough. Also, my opponent will very likely be playing a Super Ape 2.6, and once again, I should be remembering that I cannot predict it. Never. Because when I try to, I'm gonna absolutely get wrong. So, I'm gonna play Twins, I'm gonna play Blitz, just to allow it to connect to the tower, and I absolutely do. I'm gonna get this tower down. My opponent calls me lucky because I got the tower down very early on. Fair enough, but then you kinda create your own luck, and my opponent absolutely doesn't create his own luck. He just tries to brute force his way onto me, which will never ever work against me, so he should be able to learn by now. That's not the case. I'm gonna play Necromancer, clean everything up, and my opponent says oops, who, I mean, I don't know whether it's genuine uh, anymore or not. I'm gonna just play Viking at this point, and if he plays Super Ape on the other side, I'm gonna just play Piercing Archer and kinda try to tank it, because I'm kinda over his bullshit. I'm gonna get some nice cleanup. Obviously that's not gonna be the cleanest defense of the uh, Super Ape that you have seen in your entire life, but at the same time it's gonna be very cost efficient and I'm not wasting any mana that uh, could have potentially gone into the push. So in, that, in this way it's very efficient. I'm gonna play a, a Twins right here. The Ghost is on the Viking Tower, the Fifth is on the Tower. Uh, here's gonna actually play Rolling Steel and try to hold for the inexplicable reason. The game is already over, he knows it, I know it, but he still hangs on and he calls a GG's right now. So I'm gonna play a Viking here, just trying to get a full cover against this Super Ape. He even donates me Drunker for free and at this point, as you probably can tell from my voice tone, I'm pretty annoyed that my opponent uh, hasn't given up because it's absolutely over. Uh, I get his uh, tower, and then I get his viking tower, and I guess it's gonna be GG's. Ending the video on this note, I didn't want to kinda 
get annoyed but yeah my opponent was just hanging for his life for a little bit too long and yeah eventually he couldn't uh, manage it anymore so yeah thanks for watching today's video obviously viking bird spam not meta anymore but many people still use it it's still viable deck and i would say it's like in the top five decks in the meta maybe even the top threes which kind of means it is meta but like it's not such dominant meta as it was like four months ago where it was pretty much necessity to play it or you will lose so yeah uh, thanks for watching uh, if you enjoyed and aren't subscribed yet i uh, absolutely advise you to check out my other videos on the channel and subscribe to not miss uh, my future uploads because obviously I upload many different deck strategies and guides how to play and improve in Boom Arena. So if you are into that, definitely check out my channel. And with that being said, once again, thanks for watching till then. I'm going to see you guys in the next episode of Boom Arena.